This episode is brought to you by the Arvada Center. Because they're putting on the Tony and Grammy award-winning show Beautiful, the Carol King musical, September 8th through October 15th. If you don't know Carol King, she got her start writing iconic music for R&B groups like the Shirelles and the Drifters before becoming a star herself. She was in the deep in the songwriting mill in New York City. She was just like a, a building where people went and I mean it was just like a songwriting, literally a songwriting factory. It was crazy. And the musical tells her whole story, including all her hit songs like You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, Up on the Roof, and So Far Away. Oh, Carol King's amazing. She's fascinating. Tickets are available now at arvadacenter.org. Today on CityCast Denver. Parks are personal. Everyone's got their favorite neighborhood park, of course. But Denver's got a lot of great big parks and a lot more cute little pocket parks, too. So which ones are the best? Me and producer Paul Caroli are talking about Denver's best parks for all occasions with one of our favorite guests, stand-up comic Joshua Emerson. Today is Monday, August 28th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Producer Paul Caroli, hello. Hey, good morning, Bree. Joshua Emerson, welcome back. Yate a Bennett. <gasps> what does that mean? Yeah, it could be anything. Yeah. <laughs> but tell, tell us, what, what does it mean? Uh, that means good morning in Navajo. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good hey, just with it again. I want to hear it again. Yate a Bennett. Cool. Cool. Good. I'll be saying that to my neighbors. No. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I will not. Try if you want. Okay. Well, <laughs> we are actually here because we are talking about parks. Denver has this really incredible system of parks, and it includes, um, you know, what you think of as a traditional city park. It also includes mountain parks and parkways, just like sections of green space throughout the city, which were strategically placed here decades ago as the city was growing. And I I don't know, for me, I'm so glad we have them because I think it's such a defining part of our city. Do you want to share some parks facts with us, Paul? Or I can share some too. I just, I was digging park around. Facts. Yeah, just park like, facts. I guess to give folks an understanding and idea of just how much of our city is devoted to parks and like, wh- what what are they all about? Sure. Yeah. I mean, Denver has more than 250 parks as well as on. <laughs> That's it. That's the number of parks. That is all. Some of them but, are I mean, big. Some are small. Doesn't it seem like a huge amount? Like it feels I don't. Like a lot. I don't know how many of them I've been to. If there's 250 of them. Yeah. We also have this mountain park system, which is maybe mm. a different show, but like is really cool. I don't know another city that has that owns land that's not in the city that they call parks. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. You know, and so it's like places like Red Rocks and Buffalo Bills Museum and Grave and the Mount Morrison Civilian Conservation Corps camp and. You brought you know, up Red Rocks, stuff. and I just want to say what I think is also really cool about our park system is um, a lot of our parks were designed by architects, not just landscape yeah. architects, mm. but architects themselves. And so Burnham Hoyt, who's famous for a lot of buildings here, I think the the branch, the main library downtown, the original structure was designed by Burnham Hoyt. He also designed Red Rocks Amphitheater. Hmm. And I had no idea. I love that. And I just, I don't know, that was something that struck me was um, the the role of architecture, not just landscape architecture here in Denver, which is why a lot of our parks are so beautifully laid out. And like designed. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're not just like an accident that happened. It's Mm -hmm. not just a space that was left. It was like a specific, I mean, city park boathouse, you know, that, that place that was designed. That's why it's so beautiful. Yeah. Best place to get your quinceanera done. Oh, Mm, it really is a beautiful place. One of the best spots to do a photo of the skyline too. Yeah, oh. I'll be going the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like to. I like to just listen to the weddings happening at in the boathouse and like hear their music choices. It's also a thing I do. Just creep. Okay, so that's a little bit about our parks, but we're gathered here today to talk about. We have a couple categories, and I think this was just a way for us to talk about some of our favorite parks in a different way, other than just I love this park because. Yeah. So we we came up with a couple of categories. I'm going to start with our first category, which is most underrated park. Um, that could be interpreted a lot of ways, because I think when we say underrated, I think we're thinking, Wash Park is a big park, City Park is a big park. I mean, La Raza Park is is a huge cultural institution park, but what about the parks that we don't? Yeah, there's 250 of these. Yeah, yeah there's got to be some that that aren't as well known. 
Joshua, what's your pick for most underrated park? Yeah, it's going to be the Hungarian Freedom Park, all right? Dedicated by the Hungarian Club of Colorado in 1966. That's 10 years after the Hungarian uh, Revolution of 1956, which is why it was dedicated. If you ever go see it, um, it's a bronze. It's this young man uh, trying to break through the Iron Curtain, and it's it's haunting because it looks like he's being suffocated uh, by this Iron Curtain. If you, I, I, and in researching this, I found out so much about uh, the Hungarian Revolution started by t- these students at Budapest uh, Tech uh, and Economics University. And they were demanding, they're pushing back against Stalinist ideas, uh, demanding free elections, uh, putting it out on the radio. And then when they left the radio station, they got shot down. And then the entire city erupted in these militias. They took over the government uh, for 12 days. Then on November 4th, the Soviet Union came in. Um, 2,000 dead in a single day, Um, 26,000 tried, 250,000 Hungarians left um, that day uh, and fled. And many Hungarian people in the United States come from that that fleeing. Um, So this started October 23rd uh, when the USSR fell in 1989 and and Hungary became its own state again. October 23rd was named a national holiday. Um, What's interesting is that this this is the first one in the United States to sort of um, bring this to light here in the United States by the, the first park, the first park that was dedicated for the Hungarian Revolution. There's a couple of them. There's one in L.A. There's one in Cleveland, but ours was the first, and it was done by people that experienced it live. The governor was there, the mayor was there, um, and, and my favorite part about researching this is that the Hungarian Club of Colorado still exists to this day. It's right on Spear, uh, going toward. Cherry Creek, and it's right in front of some apartment complexes, and it's it's it just struck me that it's the the Hungarian Revolution is beautiful because it's people standing up for what is right, what's true in the face of just this absolute terror, knowing that they were probably not going to win, but they wanted to do what's right. And having any type of reminder of that um, here in the in the city, I think, helps us in terms of defining our culture and learning from people around the world. That And, and to be the first one to do it in the United States and to still have it there today where I can sort of reflect on that, I just, I, I, it was amazing. I really enjoyed learning about this park. Well, when you told me you were going to pick this, we, we talked about it, but I... I have a personal connection with this in a few different ways. My grandmother is one of those people who fled the Hungarian Revolution uh, in Budapest. And so this is my family's story. And, you know, I did, when I first showed up in Denver and I noticed that there was a Hungarian Freedom Park, it, it had this effect on me that I think that you've been experiencing where it was like that feeling of inspiration. And But it was also for me as a newcomer, like a very welcoming place, like knowing that that I had a personal connection and that people who went through the same thing showed up here just like me. And, um, but I honestly, I felt kind of guilty about it. You know, like there's not other parks dedicated to other revolutions. Mm. I just felt like, why me? You know, that was my response to this. There's one for Jewish folk, like, uh, what's, oh my God, what's that one? It's on the... It's on the east side of the city, like the your side, southeast side of the city. Oh, I know what you're talking about down in, yeah, way down Parker. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I think that there is, I wouldn't feel, There's some. There's I wouldn't feel some. guilty about it. But also, it's a very small piece of land. That's my one criticism. Is <laughs> I think it could be bigger. It's not exactly a premier I call it the Hungarian Freedom Median because it's like <laughs> so small. It's so small. It's like, why doesn't this community get a bigger spe- space to like celebrate? But it is there. And I agree, that piece of art that really defines it. So if you're, I was just looking it up on a map. So if you're going east on Spear, it's like bounded by Spear, First Avenue, and Clarkson. It's just this really sliv- small sliver. But that once you recognize that piece of art, it's like you can't unsee it kind of thing. It's absolutely, yeah. He's trying to burst through the Iron Curtain, and he's being suffocated. And that's haunting. But it's also keep trying to burst through the curtain because we're human. We're trying to survive. I love this new context beautiful. though that we can have now. When I pass it, I think it's differently mm-hmm. now. I understand what the repre- what it yeah. represents in the first place. It's like wrapped up in like 
white guilt and class guilt too. Because I looked into the history of why the Hungarian community was able to get a park. Mm. And it was because, well, obviously the Cold War politics of the time made it very like easy to get the mayor and the governor on board to show up. But it was because they had a benefactor who was already really well established here, who happened to be Hungarian, who got them those connections with the mayor and the governor was able to put those people in the position to make their case uh, that, and to supply the money. That what I, what I hear there is that there's somebody weaponizing privilege, you know, for something that uh, it, it exists to today. You know what I mean? That And that's what you want to do when you have privilege, to be able to weaponize it for good causes that make us better as Denverites. Well, my park is nowhere near any deep. Actually, do you want to go, Paul? Is yours better? Mine is not oh, deep at all. mine's fantastic. Please go. <laughs> oh, mine is, this is my favorite pick of the whole bunch. Oh, go. good. Then In go. case you don't know about this, about me, I like to win these competitions. Oh. We're bringing the best recommendations. And, I, and I think I'm about so to do it. Okay. Bluff Lake. Technically not a Denver park, but it functions <laughs> essentially like a park. Why are you going uh, outside of our rules? Because know, this, this place, place is so cool. You have to visit this place. That's why you have to. It Is it like it's, an it's unincorporated park. part of a county or something? It's it's run by a um, a group of people. It's like a, a nature conservancy. It's a nonprofit oh. nature conservancy. But the reason why it's cool is because it is one of the many examples of how great Denverites are at ecological restoration. It is a place in Northeast Denver, really right on the border of Aurora, just south of 70, just east of Stanley Marketplace, right on the border that follows Sand Creek. And uh, it used to be what's called a crash zone for the old Stapleton International Airport. <laughs> it was like an area at the end of a runway where there was like chemical spill off and just like they oh, had to keep no. it open wow. and not build there yeah. because, you know, they needed it in case there was a crash. Um, but now since they moved the airport, it's been totally restored. It's like a forest. It's a perfect little spot of respite within the city limits where you can go and see the most unique species of birds of anywhere in the city by far. Oh, based on what? I'm so curious. Based on the data on the, on the apps where birders Birders, report their sightings. Yeah. yeah, they, They do bluff, bluff lake, bluff lake nature center. Okay. There you go. I feel like Josh was got a little beef with oh, that. Oh, absolutely. We'll talk about it later. Tell but no, I'll no. Bring it, yeah. No, there's, <laughs> there's, there's there's a lot of great places to bird, all right? Uh, if you're a birder, you know, there's a lot of great True. parks. I would I guess my when I hear you talk about Bluff Lake, I just like imagining like um I don't know, like superhero birds coming out of this place, you know, of like you, any place. Oh, I see that, what you're yeah, with like, uh, like chemical you know, spills. And, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see these birds. Maybe that's why they're so unique. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're brand new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They have three heads. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, that's interesting. What does it look like? I guess. Is, is there a mountain? Oh, it's views, so cool. Or? It's like a valley. And oh, it's, okay. it follows Sand Creek. So like you pull up in the lot, there's a little visitor center, and then you go down a staircase that's like really quite long and steep. And then you're in a little valley, and they, it's like an outdoor classroom so there's pockets and trails and there's little areas where you know kids are learning about so and so um it's it's so beautiful interesting like who who goes i've never heard of both like like i know who, i don't like, think people, people know about it do I, people, say I hadn't heard of it do people mm-hmm. jog or like are is it's it, just really for walking because you're not allowed to take oh, okay. your bikes in it's like observing it's, nature. you're not allowed to take your uh your dogs in you're not allowed uh, to take your dogs in. Which for some of us is a perk. Uh, yeah. I would say they're the Paul's minority in, in mm-hmm. Colorado. That's mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Dogs are great. All right. I'm pro dog. But it is good to know that you can't take your dog there. Yes. Yeah. So it's important the to know. There. Yeah. All right. I'm not, I'm not trying to boast on their behalf of that. They have their own feelings about that. And I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well. Anyway, like, Bluff Lake. There you go. My underrated park is Garland Park. I like oh, Garland Park. Yeah. I love all, when I, growing up, we just called it Lollipop Lake because that's what the lake is called. And um, it just is like the perfect size park. It has a nice path all the way around it. I rode my bike. I learned how to sort of ride my bike there as a kid. Um, it's a lot bigger park than it seems. It kind of stretches out into the neighborhood. So it's got volleyball courts, baseball. Um, it's mm-hmm. like got sand volleyball Sand pits. volleyball courts, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got baseball. It's got basketball. It has a great new playground. It doesn't have the old school burn your ass off on a giant metal slide (laughs) or almost die stuff that I grew up going to, which I'll, I'll say I loved that, that playground, but um, it's also easy to get to from the Cherry Creek bike path. So even if you don't live in the neighborhood, you can ride your bike like pretty much right up to it. You should get over there soon there. They totally revamped how the lollipop Lake works and how the drainage works. Yeah. It's, it was a huge project this year. looks totally different. I have a funny story about lollipop Lake. So my dad built this like 
crazy remote control boat when I was a kid. Like he <laughs> built it out of wood and then he and my uncles went to like put it on the lake and my uncle, the first moment it was in the lake, it drowned, it like fell out, tipped over and <laughs> sunk to the bottom. And my dad was so obsessed with the fact that he made this boat that he rented a full scuba gear and got into Lollipop Lake to try to find the boat and he never found the boat. It's not that deep Stop. of a lake. Stop, you never found the boat? No. We've got some more parks to talk about, uh, but before we do that, we're gonna take a quick break. This episode is brought to you by the Colorado Restaurant Association. Because the Denver Food and Wine Festival is coming up. So if you love to eat and drink, put it on your calendar for September 6th through the 9th. But really, it's all about the two big events on the Tivoli Quad. I'm talking about the Shake and Break Showdown on September 7th, which is a food truck and cocktail competition where you get to pick the winners. And then on the 9th, the Grand Tasting, an all-you-can-eat and drink showcase of area restaurants with live DJs and a whole lot more. Proceeds benefit the Colorado Restaurant Foundation, which supports local hospitality workers, mental health and emergency assistance grants, and educational scholarships. Learn more about all the Denver Food and Wine Festival events and the cause they benefit, and get your tickets today at denverfoodandwine.com. So our next category is Best Park for Recreation. And um, I think we specified your choice of recreation, whatever mm. recreation in a park looks like to you. Uh, Paul. Yeah, I should go. I, my answer here is not, I'm not super proud of it, but this is the honest answer for me. Wash Park. I mean, it's not like exciting. Everyone knows Wash Park. My caveat is early mornings only. Yes. Ah. That's when it's empty. That's when I like to go running there and lately uh, biking there, go for a little morning ride, uh, do the loop myself and just like try to go fast because it's totally empty and like thank you for doing that when it's not totally busy because oh I, otherwise it would be not fun very dislike the people that do that when it's busy. I, yeah no i like to go to wash park with like a stick and just like try to trip rollerbladers you know cool, I mean? cool. that's <laughs> no. your choice of yeah. recreation <laughs> no i don't do that but okay. i always imagine myself doing that every time i go there <laughs> when it's busy uh it's it's insanely busy that's the only problem i have yeah. it's it's great it's it's an amazing park, great I think basketball that's courts. Why Paul's caveat's so important, yeah. right? It's early. Yeah, get there early. <laughs> uh, Joshua, what's your best park for recreation? So my best park for recreation, another boring one, but City Park. All right, and it's because of the birding. Okay, oh, really? all right, yeah. Okay. You want to talk about exquisite? I've, I've seen the largest cranes ever uh, flying <gasps> yes. and landing, and just like just swimming around on the lake, which is beautiful because they also have like the swan boats too, mm. and it's like from a distance they look so similar. Um, and then there's also for the past two years. There's been this eagle, uh, this female bald eagle that likes to come in, and she would like stare and make love eyes at the eagle in the zoo. And so there's just like this love story of like they, uh, they can't be because the eagle the in the captive zoo exactly man and the free hmm. and they're just staring bird. at each other. And then she would uh, just you know eat geese on the golf course, <laughs> just like land on top of them, <laughs> and yeah. And so just the idea that you can see like bald eagles and and and. So and like you know foxes and all that stuff plus there's a zoo in the it's in the such park a, it's such right? a gilded age park that's what i kind yeah. of love about mm -hmm. it is it's like we've got the zoo we've got the swan boats on the lake <laughs> and uh, we've got the esplanade at the end over by east high school it's also the place where they play quidditch the most here oh, in really? denver they have a quidditch league that they play there uh, at city park and so which is the goofiest sport if you ever watch it but it's just a bunch of people having fun I think my favorite spot in City Park is um, what I call Bird Island. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, don't know what totally. about. I think it's actually called Duck Lake, but that place where all those, uh, like, I don't know what kind of bird it even that's is. That's your favorite spot? Oh, I love it. Just sitting oh. there watching those birds, chaotic. like hundreds of birds. Yeah. yeah. It's just cool. The amount of birds have gotten sick from that uh, in the zoo because of that island. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, think yeah. about all the stuff city birds are picking up. Exactly. And... It's, a, it's a cesspool. But yeah, no, it's great. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Um, Brie, how about you? What's your what's your best park for recreation? I mean, my recreation is walking. And so Houston Lake Park and Athmar Park is my favorite. Interesting. I don't know that park. It's a very, again, it's a small neighborhood park. It's not unlike Garland Park. It's not as big by any means, but it's like playground, 
uh, tennis or pickleball courts, depending on how you feel about them. Um, it's got a, it's just got a little lake. It's got a nice path that goes around. It's about a 15 to 20 minute walk all the way around. You see families. There's like a couple of different like community groups that meet there. Like it's just like a very community oriented park and it's right in the center of Athmar in the neighborhood. And I just think that it's just one of those parks that's utilized exactly how parks are supposed to be utilized. Also, the view secretly low key is amazing of the mountains. Hmm. It's one of the best places to watch a sunset. But uh, for the recreation part, I just like that it's a nice quick walk and um, I can walk my dog around it. That's uh, that's an interesting thing. I got I got to go see that park. Our next category is best park for kids or best park for making you feel like a kid again. Uh, I do have fur babies. Uh, so the way I took that is uh, I'm going to talk about my favorite dog park. Absolutely. Good call. Thank you. Absolutely. Berkeley Lake Park has I the biggest uh, dog park. Uh, it's right there, you know, by, uh, by uh, was it Lakeside? Is that, that yeah. what it's called? You yeah. can see Lakeside from it. And um, there's always people there. Um, so I used to live by City Park. I used to go to the one over by uh, Carla Madison. Um, and that one is very like sandy. And sometimes there wouldn't be any people there. And so it's just me and my dog in the sand area. And it's like, that's not why. You I, take them to a dog park. You take them so that they can socialize and they can run, get energy out. And uh, it's just a good community there. It's responsible owners. Um, they have a, a park right next to it for smaller dogs, if you would like to take them for the smaller. But the, the main one is it's really big and uh it's not as judgy as other dog parks there's something about um when you go to dog parks there's a lot of like people it's not only the dogs that are sniffing each other it's the dog owners that are sniffing each other uh, <laughs> i've uh, seen not unlike the judgment at playgrounds for sure really yeah. yes oh for sure <laughs> parents so, judging other parents the whole time yeah and so uh and then my dog is the most beautiful perfect dog in the world shout out lola you're, you're a good you're a good girl but yeah so we just really enjoyed ourselves and it's a it's a good view i like it i've heard that's a great dog park you know i i don't mean to put dog parks on the table for discussion here since we already got a good topic but like we got a uh email from a listener brooke g sent a link to an oh, article brooke. about Hi, brooke. the controversy around dog parks i guess Ooh. dog parks are like maybe some experts don't think they're good for dogs or like dogs get like injured more than they have benefits from being in dog park. There's more to learn about dog parks. I'm curious wow. because I, I think if we wanted to get into the housing crisis situation, a lot of folks are living in places that don't have space for dogs. And that's, oh, that's true where these parks really serve a purpose so yeah. that you don't have to just let your, cause other people just let their dogs roam in regular parks. And I don't know. Interesting. Paul, best park for kids or a best park for making you feel like a kid again or a best dog park? <laughs> However you want to interpret it. All right. So mine is, um, mine, there's a very specific feature that makes me feel like a kid again. Um, but the overall park is also quite cool. It's also very new. Arkins Park, mm. a.k.a. Oh, this is in the Glowfield? brand spanking new Rhino Art Park. Oh, yeah. I've been to this one. You have? I think so. When we talk about downtown amenities, this is the bleeding edge. They brought in Kamal Heritage Food Incubator right on the park. So you got like a restaurant you can go to. They oh, got nice. this 4,000 square foot adaptable performance space for immersive art shows. The Denver Public Library is here. Alto Gallery is there. Alto Gallery. The thing that makes me feel like a kid is they've got these giant uh, swings that are like way oversized. So you like literally feel like a kid on them. And there's this like raised pathway where you can go maybe bring your lunch and look out over the water. And it's a very cool new space. And I'm excited to get to know it better. I have to say the architecture around it that you're talking about is really the selling point for me. It's like it's super cool to have a branch of the library right there. Mm -hmm. um, Alto Gallery, like I mentioned, does a lot of community centered events. It's run by Birdseed Collective. And um I've just like had really fun, gone to really fun openings there, hang out at the gallery, and then you get to walk out into this beautiful park. And not nothing is greater than a beautiful park at night in Denver, especially a mm. summer night. And that is really, I agree with you, Paul. It's becoming one of those spots that I'm like, it's, it's this a, is great. Something's happening. Like it's a, it's a community that's like coming into a new identity around a park, I think. Uh, my pick is, I feel like this is such an obvious one, Paco Sanchez Park. Has the Great best park. Great park. playground in the city. It's at a, it's at 12th and Knox Court. It's like Villa Park, between Villa Park and sort of West Colfax area. Mm -hmm. mm. It's this little hidden section. It's along the, it's like a gr long greenway. I can't remember the gulch's name. Ugh. Dry Gulch. Dry Gulch Park. And so it's all connected. But Paco Sanchez has this, 
huge I, we call it American Ninja Warrior Park it's oh, like, really? yeah. yeah because it has this like multi-story <laughs> thing that kids can crawl up into the inside of and then there's these massive slides that come out of it it's supposed to be I guess it's supposed to be shaped like an old school microphone this giant piece this like structure you can climb in because mm. it's Paco Sanchez Park Paco Sanchez created Denver's first Spanish language radio station here and then um he went on to become uh he was elected to the Colorado House of Representatives and became an advocate for affordable housing so the park itself has this really cool history and they interpreted that into this new playground there's also a skate park there um and then they have some really cool pieces of art there's a carlos fresquez piece there that i love it's oh it's called que viva paco and it's three records oh yeah sort of a tower it's like a sculpture it's a sculpture of these three records at different angles and it looks like it's in motion so uh, but i would say it's kind of like wash park and that you've got to pick your time because if you go like on a saturday afternoon your kid won't even be able to climb on it there's like five mm. zillion children so if you can go earlier in the day or during a weekday, it's way more of a fun experience. Hmm. Our next category is something that to me, what parks were made for. Best mm. park for people watching. Mm. Should we all just say it at the same time? I mean, I'm sure we all have the same answer, I was right? Wondering. There's one. Yeah, there's che- one. Cheeseman? Cheeseman Park. Oh, I'm a Wash Park no? person. Oh, no. Wash Park? Yeah, Cheeseman Well, no, for let's me. talk about Cheeseman. Let's talk about it because Bree's 90s experience of Cheeseman is different than current days. So wh- tell me about it. Uh, there's a lot of hipsters in Cap Hill. Uh, I think hipsters are super funny to like, cause they make, they're making decisions, you know, about how they're trying to portray themselves all the time, you know? Um, this is true. and at, I say this as a hipster, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I met my girlfriend at a vegan bakery in Cap Hill. All right. Make believe? Like, yeah. No, the other one. Oh, uh, um, I the forget. beat. The yeah. Corn corn beat. Beat, oh, the corner beat. beat. Yeah. Shout out corner beat. All right. We still here. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I I've cried in that park at, like physically, so other people have been able to watch me. Um, that view of Denver, downtown Denver, is so cool. It's different than at City Park um, and uh, the other parks where you can see downtown Denver. And it, there's something about the the architecture around it. Um, you have the hipsters and you have the rich old um, white people that live in the neighborhood right. as well. Because it's on the backside of Botanic Gardens where there's these all these massive houses right absolutely that has this history with uh, gay culture that is very important that I also think is kind of interesting and you still see uh see like remnants of that at Cheeseman and so you have this thing and I've also seen people snowmobile in the middle of that park in winter and, and mm. that was Colorado baby hey <laughs> it was really cool I enjoyed it yeah I mean Cheeseman Park you go out there on a nice day on the weekend oh, in the busy. afternoon you're talking like thousands of 20 year olds frolicking, Interesting. having picnics, you know, Chardonnay out of the plastic glass, playing that game where you throw a ball at a trampoline. Yeah, spike ball. Don't, spike ball. Don't act like you don't know what spike oh, ball is. Okay. I don't know what it is. No other park would you be. The straights have really overtaken this park. And I am very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was when I, I loved it because it was a gay cruising park. That's what it was. We talked mm-hmm. about this on the history of Capitol Hill episode mm-hmm. last summer, summer yeah. before. There's, there's still gays cruising for there sure. There better be. Yeah, they're, they're, just, like, they're just like older, you know. Uh, oh, that's what I loved it for. But Bree, you think Wash Park? <sighs> you know how I feel. So Wash Park, when I want to watch white people in the wild, my people <laughs> yeah. in the wild just going full on white people wash park is the place it's like where you see people get real weird with their rollerblades and their ski poles like those dads (laughs) I will say Cheeseman Park does have this guy that has like a moving like a live elliptical, uh, oh, which is really? like it's like a it's like elliptical I with need like to give Cheeseman Park a chance it, again. It's hilarious when you do see him because it, it's so funny because he's just like ah, I ah, just am such ah. an observational humor person that I enjoy seeing that kind of that thing will make my whole day. Yeah, seeing that guy. Well, uh, we'll put links to all of these parks in the show notes. Uh, If you have a favorite park, please let us know. Give us a call on the My Favorite Denver Parks hotline, 720-500-5418. Leave us a voicemail with your name, neighborhood, and your favorite park and why you love it. Again, that number is 720-500-5418. Joshua, Paul, thank you very much. Thanks, Bree. Yeah, yeah, I got it. 
That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell your favorite Parks employee about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye-bye. Stop naked. calling me naked. <laughs> he and my son were both like just not in clothes. I was like, hi, would you not FaceTime me like this when you know I'm at work? <laughs> That's the best time to FaceTime me like that, to be honest. He's like, tell mom about the alien you saw at the truck stop. And he's like, eh. <laughs> Could you put your alien away? <laughs> I, I was like, what? My son had like boogers all over his face. I was like, okay, someone take control of this child, please. <sighs>